Hello, and today I'll be showing you how to make custom traffic light props in City Skylines. Here's an example of the final product we'll be making in this tutorial. So first I'll start by making a rough traffic light model in Blender. In Blender, I'm using a lot of keyboard shortcuts. So to make this tutorial easier to follow, they are displayed at the bottom corner here. So I'll first select the default cube and scale it down to around 15% of its original size. Then I'll go into edit mode and select the top face and move it around six meters up and then extrude it up a little bit and then extrude it again in this direction around three-ish meters. So there we go, that's the frame. So next I'll make the signal box. So I'm going to make first a new plane and rotate it so it faces vertically like that and scale it so it's signal box shape like this. Then I'll make a new circle and I'll open this drop down and reduce the number of vertices to 16. Since having too many vertices leads to having too many total tries. To view the total number of tries for the selected object, right click on the bottom toolbar and check scene statistics. We want to keep this number under 1000 in total for the final model for performance reasons, so keep this in mind. So I'll rotate the circle vertically, just like the plane, and then scale it down so it fits. Next, I'll also do some layer organization. So in this list here, I'll just right click to make a new collection. Then I'll rename the objects and then place the circle and the plane object in it. I'll also hide the main frame model so I can see the signal box better. If dragging the middle button and holding alt, I can go into orthographic view and there I can fine tune the position of the circle. So next what I can do is rotate this view a bit and move the circle out. Then I'll select all the vertices and extrude it out twice. Then I'll go into wireframe mode and select the middle ring of vertices and fill it in. Next, I'll duplicate the light mesh with Shift D and move it down. Then I'll duplicate it again and scale the back plate to fit. Then I'll show the main mesh again in the list, select the signal parts, move it to the front and resize it a bit. I'll also select this back plate here and extrude it back and scale it down. Finally, I'll make the pedestrian signal by first duplicating the signal collection and deleting the middle light. I'll select the items and scale it down. Then I'll turn on vertex snapping and then rotate negative 90 degrees and snap it to the bottom here. Then I'll move it up and position it around here. Then I'll move down the top light and resize the box. So now the mesh is done, so I'll move on to texturing the model. Traffic light props mostly follow the same principles as other props, but the key differences are that the color, alpha, and illumination texture maps work differently. This is because traffic light props use a different in-game shader than regular props. Instead of controlling color variations, the color map texture underscore C tells the game where to find the red and green lights, while the alpha texture underscore A, instead of controlling transparency, tells the game where to find the yellow lights, and the illumination texture underscore I, instead of controlling the illumination amount, tells the game where to find the pedestrian lights. Lastly, the background color of the three textures controls the illumination amount of the main model outside of the signals. The background color needs to be consistent between the three textures, and it only seems to fully work with colors near medium gray. 
For making the texture files, I'll be using GIMP, but any image software should work for this. I'll first make the diffuse texture. So in GIMP, I'll first make a new image file that's 1024 pixels tall and wide. I'll then delete this default layer and make a new layer and select the circle selection tool. And here, make sure that this first icon is selected. Then I'll make a circle while holding the shift key down. I'll then set the color to red and fill in the circle. Then I'll copy and paste it into a new layer and move it down while holding the control key. Then I'll fill it in yellow. Next, make another copy and fill it in green. And there you go. Those are the three main lights. Next, I'll make the pedestrian lights. So first, I'll copy one of the layers and make it a bit smaller. And then I'll copy it again move it down, then go to the color picker and fill it in green. Finally, I'll make a new layer for the background texture. For this tutorial, I'll just keep it simple and set it to a solid color, but you can make it very detailed if you want. Then I'll save it out as an image file to the City Skylines import folder. Currently, I have a shortcut for it on the sidebar, but to access it without having one, do Windows R on your keyboard and type in percent local app data percent backslash colossal order. Then in that folder, click on city skylines, add-ons, import, select the top path and copy and paste it into the name field. Then for future use to add it as a shortcut, drag the import label to the sidebar here. So save the file as tutorial light underscore D. Then save the project file as well. Next, I'll go back to Blender. I'll select the frame and make a new material and set the base color to image texture. And then in this window, to get to the import folder, paste the file path in the top bar. And to save it as a shortcut later, press the plus button in the favorite sidebar. Then select the diffuse image texture we exported from GIMP and then press open. Next, I'll go to the UV editing tab select the object in edit mode and on the left hand side here there's a basic UV unwrap of the object. And in this tutorial I won't do a proper UV unwrap to save time so I'll just move this preset unwrapping into the corner here. Next I'll enable viewport shading to see if it was mapped correctly. I'll hide the camera and light objects and then I'll just select them all and then press ctrl L and then materials and then it applies the material to all of the objects. Next, I'll edit the UV texture of the back place to display the gray background fully. Now I'll assign the UV maps for the signal lights. So I'll first select the red signal and in edit mode, I'll select this face and go to UV unwrap. Next, I'm going to move and scale it so the map covers the red texture. Next, I'll do the same thing for the other signals and the pedestrian signals. So now the Blender UV unwrapping is done. So I'll go back to GIMP and I'll make the underscore C, underscore A, and underscore I textures, which define which lights are on during which phase. Before I start, I'll just do some cleanup by grouping all of these layers into one. So I'll start off by making the underscore C texture, which controls the red and green lights. But first I'll set the background and set it to 128, 128, 128, like this. Next, I'll set the red light to black and the green light to white, and then delete the other objects. Then I'll save this out as an image and then name it tutorial light underscore C. Then I'll undo the foreground changes and then next I'll make the underscore A texture, which controls the, the yellow light. So I'll set it to white then delete everything else. Then I'll save it out as tutorial light underscore A. Then I'll undo the changes again. Finally, I'll make the underscore I texture for the pedestrian lights. So I'll delete the main lights and set the red light to black and the green light to white. So then I'll save this one out as tutorial light underscore I. 
So if the texture's done, I'll go back to Blender. I'll first go back to the Layout tab. And then we're going to select the group with the main traffic light and duplicate it. And then move it up here. Then I'll select everything and then do Control J to combine it all in one mesh. Then next I want to go here and check origins and make sure the origin point is at the bottom of the mesh. Currently it isn't, so I'll first turn on vertex snapping and move it down in the current Z axis direction and snap it to a corner. Then I'll rotate the axes in the X direction so Y faces upward like in City Skylines. I also want to reset the origin scale by doing Alt S since we scaled down the original object. Next I want to check the normals and see if they're all facing the outside direction. So I'll go here and click face orientation. As we can see, everything but the panels looks good. So I'll just go into edit mode and then just select panels and then flip them until everything is blue. I can finally export the mesh by going to file, export, FPX. Make sure to select, make sure to check selected objects. Then click export. For this tutorial, I'll skip making the LED model and use the in-game generated one. So now I can finally open City Skylines. So I'm just going to do that. So in the main menu, go to editors, asset editor, new. Then select prop. Then I'm just going to search for 0, 02. That will bring me to the vanilla traffic light. Then I'm going to select the mesh. There we go, it imports correctly. Now I'm going to set the scale to 100. Just like that, it's imported. So right now it's kind of hard to see what lights are on. So to check if the texture maps are working, I'll just drag the day night control slider. So only the red lights are on. So the texture maps seem to be working. So next I'll go back to GIMP and I'm going to open the main diffuse texture file. And now I want to apply a darkening effect to the whole image so we can see the traffic light state in direct sunlight. This happens because the game brightens up the diffuse texture by a lot when importing. So to compensate for this, we need to darken the whole diffuse texture. So I'm just going to go to colors, levels, and then drag the slider here, around like down to here, and then save. Override the underscore D image, then we can import it again. Then we import that, it's still kind of hard to see. So let's try darkening it a bit more and drag this down a little bit more, save it out, then import it again. Looks a bit better, but we can still darken it a bit more. So there we go, we can finally see the actual light in daylight and check. So now we can save it out as an asset. So I'm just gonna go press the escape key, press save asset, and then just save it out. So now I'm just going to go to the desktop. Next to test the traffic lights in game, you could go to the road editor and swap one of the traffic light props on an existing road, save it and load it in game but I'll instead test it globally with the prop tester tool in my traffic light replacer mod. So to do that, first go to the workshop and subscribe to it, then launch the game. Then go to content manager and enable it. There might be an error message about there being no packs, but that's fine since we're just using the prop testing feature. For testing, I find that the picking one of the scenario maps is helpful since it already has a predefined street layout. So I'm just gonna select one of these if the game loaded first go to the main game settings and then in traffic light replacer make sure show pack creator helper is checked then go over to an area where there's intersections then go to find it and just search for your assets so that's so this one then press update to grab the 
prop name, then press test to replace all the in-game traffic lights with the current prop. The rotation is off, so I'll adjust the global rotation of all of the traffic lights by negative 90 degrees in the transform settings while holding alt to snap the values to 5 degree increments. And as you can see, it's working. Both the main lights and the pedestrian lights seem to work. The next step is to make the other traffic light variations required for a road, such as these vertical lights. And depending on the style you're going for, also mirrored variations of these. Making these should be relatively straightforward since they're just Mara edits to the main model. After that, you just need to add the traffic light to a road, which can be done individually in the road editor or globally using the traffic light replacer mod. To learn more on how to make a pack of traffic light props that works with the traffic light replacer mod, click on the video above. Thanks for watching.